Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah. All the praises is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the blessings and salutations be unto Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to those who follow him till the day of judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, Islam has brought about human rights that are unique and that are not seen before Islam. If we study the pre-Islamic history, pre-Islamic era, then we will come to appreciate what Islam has brought. This is what made Islam spread across the globe. Thereafter, many laws of the world of various countries are actually taken from the biography of Prophet Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in Mecca in the year 570. He is an example and best model for all of humanity. He excelled in all walks of life by being a prophet, ruler, orator, soldier, husband, friend, father, uncle, nephew, and grandfather. He was a man of love, patience, courage, wisdom, generosity, intelligence, and magnitude who inspired millions of lives throughout the world. Shortly before his death, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu delivered his last sermon which is known as Khutbah Hajjatul Bida on the 9th of Zul Hijjah in 10th Hijri after migration from Mecca to Medina. This last sermon, Khutbah Hajjatul Bida, was delivered in the valley of Mount Arafah. <coughs> so this last khutbah of Prophet Muhammad was delivered in the valley of Mount Arafa. <coughs> and this khutbah is mentioned in almost all books of hadith like hadith number 1623-1626 and 6361 of Sayyid al-Bukhari. Imam Muslim also refers to this sermon in Hadith number 98. Imam Al-Tirmidhi has also mentioned this sermon in Hadith number 1628-2046-2085. Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal has given us the longest and perhaps the most complete version of this sermon in his Masnood. Hadith number 19,774. This khutbah of Prophet was long and it contained much guidance and instructions on many issues. It was the best example of eloquence, brevity, consciousness and the content of message was human and emphasized upon justice and equality. The message in the sermon was delivered more than 1400 years ago and is an essence of true message and philosophy of Islamic faith. It is a great khutbah and we should all pay attention to its message and guidance. Now here is the complete khutbah of final sermon of Khutbah Hajjatul Bida. After praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet peace be upon him said, O oh people, lend me an attentive ear, for I know not whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore, listen to what I am saying to you very carefully. And take these words to those who couldn't be present here today. O oh people, 
just as you regard this month, this day, this city as sacred, so regard the life and property of every Muslim as sacred trust. Return the goods entrusted to you to their rightful owners. Hurt no one so that no one hurt you. Remember that you will indeed meet your Lord and that He will indeed reckon your deeds. Allah has forbidden you to take usury. Therefore, all interest obligations shall henceforth be waived. Your capital, however, is yours to keep. You will neither inflict nor suffer any iniquity. Allah has judged that there shall be no interest and that all the interest due to Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib shall henceforth be waived. Every right arising out of homicide in pre-Islamic days is henceforth waived. <coughs> and the first such right that I waive is that arising from the murder of Rabia ibn al Harith. O men, the believe unbelievers indulge in tempering with the calendar in order to make permissible that which Allah forbid and to forbid that which Allah has made permissible. With Allah, the months are twelve in numbers, four of them are holy, three of these are successive and one occurs singly between the months of Jamadar and Sava. Be out of Satan, for the safety of your religion, he has lost all hope that he will ever be able to lead you astray in big things. So be aware of following him in small things. O oh people, it is true that you have certain rights with regard to your women, but they also have rights over you. Remember that you have taken them as your wives only under a trust from Allah and with his permission. If they abide by you, if they abide by your right, then to them belongs the right to be fed and clothed in kindness, to treat your women well and be kind to them, for they are your partners and committed helpers. And it is your right that they don't make friends with any one of whom you don't approve, as well as never to be unchaste. O people, listen to me in earnest. Worship Allah, far from your five daily prayers, fast during the month of Ramadan, and offer a jakah, part from Hajj, if you have the means. All mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab nor does a non-Arab have any superiority over an Arab. Also a white has no superiority over a black, nor does a black have any superiority over a white, except by pity and good action. Learn that every Muslim is a brother to every Muslim and that the Muslims constitute one brotherhood. Nothing shall be legitimate to a Muslim which belongs to a fellow Muslim unless it was given freely and willingly. Do not therefore do injustice to yourselves. Remember, one day you will appear before Allah and answer for your deeds. So be our don't stray from the path of righteousness after I am gone. O oh people, no prophet or apostolate will come after me 
and no new faith will born. Reason will therefore, O people, understand words which I convey to you. I leave behind me two things the Quran and my example, the Sunnah. And if you follow these, you will never go astray. All those who listen to me shall pass my words to others and those to others again. And it may be that the last words understand my words better than those who listen to me directly. Be my witness, O Allah, that I have conveyed your message to your people. Thus, the beloved Prophet ﷺ completed his first sermon, final sermon, and when he finished his farewell speech, the revelation came to him, the final verse of the Quran, which is mentioned in chapter number 5, verse number 3. This day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my grace upon you, and have chosen Islam for you as your religion. Even today, the last sermon of Prophet ﷺ is passed to every Muslim in every corner of the world through all possible means of commun commun communication. Muslims are reminded about it in all the mosques and in lectures around the world. Indeed, the meanings found in the sermon are indeed astounding, touching upon some of the most important rights Allah has over humanity and humanity has over each other. Though the Prophet Salam's soul has left this world, his words are still living in our hearts. The Prophet's last sermon is a message for mankind today and for all generations to come. It lays out basic principles for getting the best from oneself as well as benefiting others. Reflecting on its message is a good exercise. Applying its lessons can be equated to a similitude of using the right tools for the right tasks, improving one's life holistically. One can heed words of wisdom and guidelines from the last sermon, Khutbah of the Prophet his sermons emphasized on few basic things which I am just going to tell about. First one, sacredness of a Muslim's life and property. Then, the importance of propagating this message to all others. The Muslim's responsibility thus doesn't end by following the religion. They have to propagate the message of Islam to others. A reminder that everyone is fully accountable. A reminder that everyone is fully accountable for their deeds and Allah will take every person into account. If everyone heeded to this fact alone, the world would be a much better place today. Then, more important thing come out from the last sermon is, hurt no one, so that no one may hurt you. These words of the Prophet are self-explanatory. Isn't so? The prohibition of dealing with interest. Numerous accounts in Quran and Hadith prohibit taking, giving or being a part of any transaction dealing with interest. Then, 
the words you will neither inflict nor suffer any iniquity these words of prophet alayhi salatu wasalam are self explanatory too then the awareness of shaitan and how shaitan can work to deviate us from the right path and doing evil things it is also mentioned in this khutba then the vital one in human rights rights of women over men and rights of men over women it is also come out as a gist from the khutba then treatment of women with kindness it is also one important point which we can take from the khutba of hazrat alwida then modesty and chastity in women the importance of worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying your five daily prayers salah fasting during the month of ramadan giving charity zakat performing hajj then equality amongst all the may blacks white arabs non arab non arab so and so equality equality amongst all then about justice the need to establish justice it is also mentioned in this khutba and finally islam is the final divine religion and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last prophet and quran is the last book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is confirmed in this last sermon of prophet muhammad alaihi salatu wasalam now let's do our part in following the prophet's message and propagating the message to everyone we know may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the chance of propagating true message of islam and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with his rahmah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh